Hey there, friends. Happy Sunday to you. I'm not sure that I remembered how to do this or not. It's been quite some time since I have been over here on YouTube. I've missed you guys. I hope all of you are doing well. I'm off on a new adventure. I am learning the artsy nature of watercolor. Watercolor is something that I did when uh, my kids were small. Uh, I did like custom stationery and things like that. Uh, and then, you know, when they got bigger, then I went back to work and I didn't do things like that anymore to generate a little bit of extra income around the homestead. But I recently saw a video by Diane Anton, and I'll leave the link in the description box below. My little 65-year-old brain just really can... It's a challenge to to do something or learn something that's going to take forever. That's what I really like about Diane. She has tutorials, for, so something like this can come together, uh, you know, like in less than an hour, and it is so much fun to watch her and to listen to her. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description box below, but I just wanted to do a quick flip of my... Uh, watercolor art journal so you guys can kind of see what I've been doing. This is not watercolor. This is just a blobby thing that I did when I was testing out some inks. But the first thing that I did with Diane, and I've only been doing this since April the 10th, which is funny because that is my older son's birthday and he was 44 this year. This is the first little piece that I did. I don't have, I'll, I'll, as I flip through here, I'll show you how I'm keeping notes on the tutorials that I am watching with Diane. And, you know, my, I'm kind of, um, I'm putting a date on everything because I like to see progress. And that's kind of where we're going with this. I, my favorite part about doing this little wildflower scene was the bees. I love the bees. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't done them since um, since April the 10th, but that's okay because I am going to revisit uh, bees next week. And you know what a perfect time it is to uh, to to do some watercolor um, to uh, to really capture the the essence of spring and the beauty of spring and the color of spring. It's just kind of like this really nice time to uh, to launch into a watercolor project. I did this one on April the 13th. This is called, uh, again, I don't, I don't know, but we'll go flip through here and you'll see it again and it will have a title on it, what tutorial it was. So you start out with like these blobs and I'm going to be painting some of these things on YouTube so you can see how um, how they come together. Um, so what you do is you do the flowers and then you go back and embellish them. So this one has swirls. This one has flowers within flowers. This was a, a, a blob of black ink that I accidentally got on this piece that I kind of just turned into a butterfly. But really, there's like... A, it's very refreshing and very fun. This was just something that I knocked together, but I realized that I don't know how to put things in a vase, so hopefully uh, Diane will have a video about that. I did this one on April the 13th. These little birds take about eight minutes to do. You start with just a, a round circle like this, and then you add some pen and ink and embellishments, and you get these quirky birds, and I really do love them. Uh, poppies I did on April the 13th. This is another tutorial that I'm going to revisit. I really did like the way the poppies came out. The background kind of, I, I, I wasn't getting that. So again, you know, I'll go back and watch this. Uh, this one's on 416. You can tell that it's the very same tutorial as this. But I realized when I did this one that things were coming out a little too small, that I needed to be a little bolder and a little bigger 
with the uh, the initial like um, blobs. I know that's not what they're called, but anyway, the initial brush marks that are going into this. And I did make this one bigger. And the next one that I'll show you, I made even bigger. But I'm really digging this technique. It makes you feel really good to, um, to just do something different. So if you haven't done anything different in a while, visit Diane. <laughs> Pick up some ideas over there. It, it's not one of those things where you have to have the proper everything. You know, you can start out with a, a cheapy paint set and some cheapy brushes and, you know, move up from there. Use what you have. You guys know how I've always, um, how I've always uh, talked about using what you have. This is probably one of my favorites. This is called How to Paint a Delicate Floral Watercolor botanical pen and ink semi-abstract wildflower meadow this was probably one of the the most fun uh, pieces that I've done so far because basically what you do is you get a paintbrush lots of water a little bit of paint and just sling the brush now you can sling it or you can tap it or you can watch Diane and learn how to do it the correct way this one is called the easiest flowers you'll ever paint so that's on 416 I did this one on 416 on 417 I did easy loose watercolor floral design relax and enjoy painting for bookmarks cards or journals if you are on my patreon site you guys got a photocopy of portions of this uh, Diane calls it an all over painting and that's really what it was you guys are going to be so intrigued by this easy loose watercolor floral design thing that you'll go wow I want to do that over and over and over and over again because that's where I am with things like this so this one's on 417 on 419 uh, I did get out my watercolor paper and started using watercolor paper. The paper in this book is eight and a half by like ten and a half. It is not watercolor paper, but I gotta tell you, I'm having really good results with just this like three dollar notebook that I picked up at Michael's. I, I I was able to get a lot bolder with my brush strokes and. Uh, cover a whole lot more paper. Um, I, the next one that I do, I'm going to go even bigger. Just, you know, it's just so much fun, y'all. And this is 9 by 12. This was from the my watercolor, uh, my watercolor paper book. You know, the proper thing. I love doing the sheep. Uh, that's another thing about listening to her. She lives in France. She has a garden. There are sheep. There are dogs. There are cats, there are chickens. It, it's so enchanting just to listen to Miss Diane um, talk about where she lives and, and her chickens and dogs and stuff like that. And the cool thing is she has goats, so you can hear the goats like bleeding in the background. It's just so super cool. All right, this one is painting watercolor flowers and adding doodles. And as I finish this up, and then I looked at it the next morning, and I realized that everything needs to be bigger. Uh, I don't know, you'll notice that theme is kind of coming up. I'm, I, I think I'm just still tentative with my brush and my strokes and my, um, my water and my paint that I just need to kind of keep reminding myself of that. So this one I did yesterday, 422. Um, this one I did yesterday as well. I also started uh, a little swatch page that accompanies the painting, which is kind of making this book, you know, the way that I'm using it, very adaptive uh, to where I can work on some techniques. So I called this one Swatch in Swatch and Doodle Pens, Paint, Sharpies, White Pens. Whoop. There it is right there. Um, and, and I have a selection of pens. 
I found some pens that don't work, some pens that do work. But I thought this would be really fun to do in the morning uh, as I'm having my coffee. So, uh, you know, maybe one morning this week I'll come back and, and work with pens and paints and Sharpies and white pens on these uh, little swatch swatches that I made. This one, again, painting watercolor flowers and adding doodles. Not all flowers need to be outlined or embellished. I left this one un un outlined. Uh, you can see that I did some rough outlines on most of these, but with this one, I did not. And I thought, huh, you know, I kind of like that. Uh, again, this was on 422. This is what I did this morning. I've got my little swatch a doodle thing going on here. So swatch and doodle with pens and paint right here. And then this is what I finished this morning. Again, I still don't think I quite have the expanse that I need on the canvas. Hold on just a minute. Hello, babe. Brass Pro Shop. You're going to Brass Pro Shop? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have quite the um, quite the area that you you know you need to cover on um, on a canvas. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'm just going small when I need to go big. However, I'm really happy with the way that the embellishments came out on this. Um, I, I really love the leaves. And this time, you know, because I had my note over here, painting, watercolor flowers, adding doodles needs to be bigger. And then not all flowers, hold on a second. Not all flowers need to be outlined or embellished. You know, I'm just like keeping these notes. So uh, the next time I do it, I can kind of go back to my notes and go, oh, okay, I need to do this differently. Anyway. Um, oh, stems to the left, straight, and right, because all of my stems are going this way. You see, <laughs> some of them need to go down, some of them need to go to the left, some of them need to go to the right. So that's where I am with that. I am absolutely having, uh, for the first time in probably about 13 months, I'm really having a lot of fun. And I think that um, anytime you do art for income, you run the risk of not having that deep level of fun and creativity. It, it's just something that just sometimes happens. It happened with my music. Uh, you know, music really did get to be, you know, it was very fun. It was very engaging. It was very active. And then it was like, it was something that I did for a living. And when those, you know, when your, when your passion and your income start to kind of collide, odd things start happening. And that's kind of what happened to me. Uh, last year. Things have not been the same uh, since COVID, basically. Um, just everything uh, really did change, but that, you know what? Change is really good, man. Change can lead you to new places, and look where it's led. So I'm really grateful to have that change, and to have the, to be in this place, and to uh, be able to share with you guys, find a new teacher. Diane is wonderful. She's very encouraging. She's 65 years old or something like that. So to me, the things that she talks about are things that I think about and, you know, issues that I have. So she's just very engaging, very fun. Big shout out to Diane Anton. She is just absolutely wonderful. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider a thanks. And you'll be seeing more in my Adventures with Watercolors series over here at YouTube. It was nice to be able to talk to y'all again. I had uh, I had taken all of my uh, filming stuff down. <laughs> um, that's where I was. But now it's back up, and um, I'm happy to be able to share with you guys again. Thanks a bunch. See you soon. Bye.